more acceleration and a cleaner contact point that is easier to replicate. That is what Thomas wants out of his forehand and that is why he has sent me some uh, footage so I can do a stroke analysis. My name is Micah Babel, former top 30 WTA pro. And as you already know, when we do the stroke analyses, I will let the forehand, the shot run here a little bit just so that we all get an idea. And then I will start to get into the details. All right, so that was at 83%. We will look at it in a little bit more detail. So what I want to do is I want to go over the things that you're doing well, Thomas, because I think there's two things, two or three things that you can work on to get better acceleration. And they are not uh, the biggest fixes I have ever uh, had to talk about. So I'm really excited about that for you. So first things first, as usual, we're looking at the grip. Uh, it seems like you are in a semi-western you're not in a continent uh sorry you're not in an eastern grip so that's good there is good upper body rotation here both arms in your unit turn are bringing the racket back and you separate here at midline that's when your hands are separating so you get a pretty good pre-stretch on your take back you're keeping your hand below your shoulder and above your hip that's exactly what we want. Racket face points away from you, and that will be one of the things that I'm gonna point out a little later. Okay, and then we're seeing you do have a racket head drop. It is below the point of contact, so you do have a low to high swing here. Contact point is out in front. And on this particular one, I think that is one of the better contacts because you keep it between hip and shoulder. That usually is not the problem. So good contact point out here. And then you have your um, wrist rolling over and your forearm pronation so that when you're done with the shot, we see that the racket face with which you hit the ball is facing to the outside. So those are really good fundamentals. Let's jump into what I'm seeing. There's two things that I would like for you to work on. So number one is the racket face, as I pointed out, is facing away from you. So in a more modern forehand, at some point, especially here on the downswing, the racket face actually points down. And I will put somebody next to you in a minute and you can see that in comparison then. And then on the further downswing, the racket face actually points down and yours never does. Now, why you want that is you can just accelerate through the ball more. You're just imparting more topspin on the ball that way and that helps you keep the ball in play. So to me, it feels a little bit like you're almost holding back because if you're now swinging full go, you're losing control over the ball. The second thing that I want you to notice is that your contact point every now and then to my mind is actually too far in front. Usually it's a little bit the other way around and people get jammed because they have the ball too close at them looking from the side. However, yours is almost a little too far away. This here is a little bit better, but what I'm seeing here is your hip rotation, the swinging of the right foot to come around here actually to me, happens more as a function for you to stay balanced rather than really a way to drive into the ball and create some power on that. And not necessarily power, but basically the racket head speed that you need to uh, when you want to accelerate more. So it's a rather flat ball still and that makes it difficult to control. And here it does seem to me like you're having to bring this foot around to just stay balanced. And ideally we want to use 
the outside foot, the outside leg here, to really deeply load. And one way that you can do that, and I think that's why uh, I don't think it's a very big fix is here. I want you to look at the spacing of your legs, the distance between your legs when you're hitting. That's a little bit more than shoulder width. Ideally, you want to have a bigger stride because that automatically lets you load better. You drop better into your legs and you use your legs a lot more aggressively. So let's look at the next one here as well. So again, you're moving forward. So there is some transition of your body weight into the shot, but you're really not using everything that you got. And here we're also seeing very beautifully that the racket face never drops, right? It is below the incoming ball, but you're not creating a whole lot of rotation. So if we now look at somebody who hits an incredibly good forehand, we'll see the differences a little bit more in the racket work and then also the timing of when the hip should rotate into the ball and help, will help you to really pull up and accelerate into contact point and also the spacing of your feet. So let's set it up. So we have a slightly different angle um, on which we're looking at or with which we're looking at both your forehand. So I want to start from the get go here. So I want you to focus here on Fabio Fonini's forehand because he makes it look so effortlessly, but it is because he uses first the outside leg, uh, the outside leg and then really good coordination of letting that energy travel through his legs, his hips, uh, torso, shoulders, and then lastly, the arm. And what we want to look at is when the hip starts to drive forward. So in this here, when he's in his lock in position, meaning here he's got all his energy stored. The lock in position is when the racket cap, the butt cap points at the ball. That signifies the end of the preparation. So every little bit of ounce of energy he has created. And we see that here. He's stepping forward. Yes, that is one way to do it, but he steps into a slightly more open stance. It's a little bit more of a semi open stance. Look at the spread here. That is clearly wider than shoulder. And now we want to look at when does the hip come around. The hip actually precedes the shoulder. And that makes sense if we're talking about, we're always chewing that to death, the kinetic chain, right? Your energy that you created by dropping into your outside leg travels up. And again, it goes through leg, through hip, here, torso, and then chest, shoulder, and so on and so forth. So as he's hitting the ball, Yes, his right leg is still back here, but his hip bone is looking to us. And when I'm scrolling that forward into one of your forehands here, as you're making contact, and I do like that you have these shorts on, you see that your hip bone is behind your shoulder and it should be at least level. So there's basically some energy that dissipated into somewhere, but it surely didn't translate into your shot. So ideally you want to have these two a little bit more connected. You don't want to go crazy and really rip around that hip. That's another mistake that uh, rec players often do when they're watching the pros, because we see this massive forward rotation here off the trunk of the hips. You want to have these connected. So we're seeing the ball leaving the racket now. Good contact point here, obviously. And you want to notice that the racket face also is slightly closed. We can't really see that as well on yours, but there definitely should be a slight closing over the ball there. And now you see the ball is leaving the picture here, basically. And 
the hip now in the next frame starts to come around and you see that he created so much energy that she act uh, that he actually lifts off a little bit whereas i'm thinking when you're having your hip come around again it's almost more in an effort to keep you balanced so that you're not falling forward so those are the two things here the hip and shoulder want to be a little bit more connected and that let's now look at the racket work of fabio fonini at this point you're both looking fairly similar the racket face looks out but also down already a little bit more now he lets it drop clearly below the wrist and the racket face looks completely down when it's at its furthest extension so that really allows you to really pull up and over the ball and swipe i almost want to call it swipe over the ball and create a lot of rotation forward rotation that gets the ball up over the net, gives you good net clearance, but then brings the ball down again. So pulling forward and up. It's not like he's muscling that with his shoulders. It's coming from the hip and then travels up through the shoulder. And then there is the racket face coming over the ball a little steeper. And his contact point, we see that here, is actually a little closer to his center of gravity. Whereas some of yours are a little further out, and you see that here, that you're really trying to extend. But at this point, your racket face here is still pointing to the other side, whereas Fabio's is still already rotated. Just imparting way more topspin on the ball. So in recap, three things actually. Wider stance. See that here? Barely wider than shoulder width. That allows you to drop a little bit more. It's not like Fabio here is like, you know, excessively dropping into his knees, but it just helps with the hip drive and then the shoulders. Second, you want to work on letting that racket head dip down and close right here and then coordinate and leave these here a little bit more connected for the ideal transfer of power into the ball. So let me know in a couple of weeks if you have the time to work on this, how this is working out. And I appreciate that you sent your uh, footage in. If any of you other uh, viewers want your own stroke analysis, please check it out in the description. You can always email me your footage or text it to me and you can order it at the link that's in the description.